Hey there guys and girls, the Introvert Opal here, and today we are going to be looking at the top seven artists that were fired from bands for strange reasons. In this list, we'll be basically looking at several different band members from different bands who were thrown out of the group for really odd, peculiar reasons. Now, whether the band and also the band that we'll be looking at are very old groups as well, in case you are wondering, and uh, basically... This is um, another list that I've been wanting to do since, um, along with my a lot since September of 2019, along with my top six scrap dumbs we want to hear so badly video. Now this, all my sources came from um, from um, the BBC, from a website that they have, and they have a bunch of different um, countdown articles that they have that I would recommend you guys um, check out and. Um, so without further ado, let's begin and let's get into the countdown. Number seven, Doug Boogie from the band Queen. Now, as you all know, Queen had a very, was a very iconic lineup and they were a very iconic band. And they had, of course, like what I said just a few seconds ago, a good lineup uh, consisting of Freddie Mercury, Brian May, John Deacon, and Roger Taylor. But initially, when the band started, they actually didn't have John Deacon and actually had three bass players, Mike Groves, Barry Mitchell, and Doug Boogie, the guy we'll be talking about today. Now, initially, when I saw this, this took me by surprise, as I always thought when they started, they had John Deacon. But it turns out they actually had three bass players before they got the King, Mr. D. Um, Mr. Deaky, um, John Deacon. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, yeah, they actually had three different bass players, and the last bass player they had, Doug Bogey, the was fired from the band, and simply because he jumped around too much. Now, you see, Doug Bogey, before, before they got John Deacon, they had, um, three, several bass players, like the one I, like the ones I just mentioned before. Now, with him, he only got to play, he, only a couple of gigs before they threw him out and according to Brian May he the only reason why he got thrown out was simply because in his own words he jumped up and down in a manner most incongruous says um May so that is why John John De that's why Doug Bogey got thrown out of the band and replaced with John Deacon and according to um Doug in his own words he says so I was having great fun standing beside Roger Taylor, who I admired greatly drumming and singing, said Doug of his short time in Queen. Must have upset Freddie. It seems Brian May was very unimpressed too. Why didn't they say so? I could have happily adapted. But I loved playing so much. Who, who wouldn't jump about? And that is true. When you're playing in a band, a band like Queen, that's filled with so many catchy songs, who wouldn't jump about and stuff? And the last section of his article says, Queen eventually settled on fourth basis, John Deacon, writer of Queen classics like Another One Bites His Dust and I Want to Break Free. He didn't jump about. And that is true. John Deacon didn't really jump about. Personally, I think um, Doug Bogey was treated unfairly. I feel like, feel like the dude didn't get um, the chance he needed. He could have been a good bass player, but then again, when you're comparing him to John Deacon, of course John Deacon would win. I... I just really like John Deacon. But yeah, ultimately, that's him, that ended up happening, and I just feel bad for the dude. Number six, Andy Roke of the Smiths. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've never heard of the Smiths in my life. In fact, I actually heard of them. Well, I have heard of the Smiths before, but I didn't really look into them until doing this video. Um, But... Yeah, I've never heard of them in their li in their lives, and I've never heard what kind of music they make. I don't really know them, but um, according to the timeline on Wikipedia, apparently there was a brief period in 1986 where Andy Rook was fired from the band and replaced briefly by Craig Gannon. Now, why was he fired from the band? Um, um, from apparently from an alleged drug use. Now, when I was reading this part of the article. Well, um, I couldn't really exactly find the part where it said um, that 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 there was a drug use in it. So I'm just gonna read the entire statement um, on right here. So, oh, um, wait, hold on. I'll go search for it right now. Derp. Right. So according to what I've just read, apparently, um, 
Morrissey, one of the members, I'm assuming, um, apparently wrote on a postcard card on Rook's um, windscreen wiper on his car saying, Andy, you have left the Smiths. Good luck and goodbye. And the reason why was because of a drug use. And uh, although the bass player was eventually allowed to come back into the band and and the band split it up anyway, but asked by the Daily Beast if he still has possession of the postcard, Rook answered, my ex-wife has it because I left in a hurry. She has a lot of my stuff. Morrissey has denied he he wrote any such postcard. Rook envisions a time in the future where his former wife auctions it online. So, according to what I've just read, apparently, um, Morrissey apparently wrote a postcard to Andy and basically put it on his um, car and said, you've left this mess because you have a drug use, apparently. Um, I don't really know. Um, I'm sorry if I'm if I look very unprofessional. It's just that I didn't really have much time to, you know, do information. It's sort of like my top six scrapped albums video where I didn't really have a lot of time to, um, you know, um, you know, like figure things out. And so I end up looking like a fool or when I realized when I have the information right in front of me, which I could have had off screen. But yeah, that's basically um, why um, Rook has been, um, well, got fired, because apparently um, Morrissey um, concluded that he apparently had um, drugs on him, so he, he fired him, and though he was allowed to come back, um, they broke up anyway, so kind of a weird situation. Again, I don't know much about the Smiths, I'm so sorry if I, if I'm, if I don't know much about them, it's just that I really don't. Number five, Keisha Buchanan of Sugar Babes. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've never heard of Sugar Babes. Just like the Smiths, I've never heard of Sugar Babes. And I've only found out about them because of this article, really. Um, but yeah, I've never heard of them. But apparently, one of the female members... members um, yeah, it's, by the way, this is an all-girl group we're talking about. Keisha Buchanan was eventually fired and was replaced by Jade Ewan. And the reason for why she was um, fired was simply because of uh, in, in, in fighting and a royal dispute. That's what it says for the reasoning of sacking. All right, I'm going to try and figure out um, what it says and I'll be right back. So um, according to what I've just read, apparently, um, according to The Guardian, um, that at, suggested at the time that there may have been a dispute over royalties as well as a friction between Keisha and Muta's replacement in the band, um, Amel Baraba, who had missed two Sugar Babes concerts and also guested Tinchi Strider's number one single, Leave N Never Leave You er Never Leave You earlier that year, and so it's because of that I think. Um, well, yeah, it is, um, that Keisha ended up leaving, and she said on Twitter, stating, Dear friends, I'm sad to say that I'm no longer a part of Sugar Babes. Although it was not my choice to leave, it's time to enter a new chapter in my life. I would like to state that there are no arguments, bullying, or anything of sort that led to this. Sometimes a breakdown in communication and lack of trust can result in different things. I've been in this band for 11 years, and I've achieved so much. I have a great family and friends who are behind me 100% and at the age of 24 I'm I'm now going out into this world on my own so basically and it's because of all those reasons that resulted in her getting fired and replaced by Jade Ewan for a bit before the band would um, end up ending in 2011 and then they although they later ended up coming back in 2019 they and even though later on on they came back in 2019 um, but, but before they came back in 2019, in 2011, the three founding members formed Muta, Keisha, and Sofian, which are basically their last, which is basically their first names, I'm assuming. Yeah, or MKS for short. While the cognitive rogue Sugar Babes decided to recede commercially, neither band appears to be any, any active any longer, that, though, though Keisha did secure the sugar babes trademark in the in the united states in 2015 so again i don't really know much about the sugar babes at all again i've just heard of them from this article so i have no idea about this band so just like what with the smiths incident i can't really um 
<clears throat> say much, but it appears that there was a bit of a fight and a bit of um, um, royalty dispute as well as um, a breakdown in communication and lack of trust. Us. And so those four things, although some of them could be the exact same reasons, which might result in two reasons, are the reasons why he, she ended up leaving. Number four, Dave Glover from the band Slade. Now Slade, just like Sugar Babes and the Smiths, are a band that I, once again, I've never heard of them and I don't listen to them. So there's not much I can say from the band, but... One of the members, um, Dave Glover, who was the bass player, ended up leaving, ended up getting fired from the band for a really shocking and horrifying reason. This reason and um, was being engaged to a serial killer. Now, this wasn't just any serial killer. This was none other than Rosemary West, off of the infamous Fred and Rose West duo, you know, the duo that were like, that were like, you know, like they were doing horrible things to their daughters, to like, the, I mean, to, yeah, to their daughters, I'm assuming. I've kind of forgotten about them, but I think they were like harming their own daughters and they were killing off other children and they were just a very sick um, duo. And it turns out that the bass player for the band, Dave Glover, got off, off married to the bear. And got married to, got engaged to this to this woman who killed little more and was prob and from what from my memory was even worse than Fred, Ed, Ed. and and that happened around two thousand three and and it was just truly horrifying and um, West's solicitor solicitor said in a statement that she decided to give this uh, give this young man his life back. Glover, who'd been playing in Slade 2 for the past three years, denied there was any wedding or repudiated or repudiated the number number of letters the pair had supposedly sent to one another. Nonetheless, he was sacked unceremoniously by the group's oops Dave Hill, who told the Birmingham Post, "I was stunned when I heard that Dave." Glover was was planning to do. I had absolutely no idea he had any contact with Rose West or even had a girlfriend. I'm completely horrified by the, by it. It's it's very upsetting to me personally. I'm glad to see the back of him. He's a nice bloke and all, but this is just totally sick. He had to go for the good for the good name of the band. Now, this, in my opinion, out of all the the out of all the strange reasons, is truly the most shocking reason, in my opinion. I mean, you got engaged to. A woman like Rose West, like from my memory, from the top top fives video that I heard, he she was absolutely horrifying and shocking, and was even worse than Fred, I'm assuming. But yeah, um, he ultimately got um he ultimately got fired from that band, and has since then been replaced by bass player John Barry. That's what it says on um Wikipedia, the timeline for Wikipedia. Number three, Jimi Hendrix from Little Richard's backing band, The Upsetters. Now, as you all know, Jimi Hendrix is um, one of the greatest guitar players the world has ever seen. The um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have inducted him as like one of the greatest instrumentalists ever to have lived. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I didn't know who Jimi Hendrix was for the longest time. In fact, if anything... Thing. I actually don't know about him now and I'm actually planning to do research on him and I and for some reason my mind keeps comparing him to like Bob Marley for some reason um but yeah as you all know he he may be one of the greatest guitar players ever the world has ever seen but that didn't stop him from being kicked out of the touring band of a of a of a legendary rock and roll roller known only as Little Richard who was also one of um Jimi Hendrix's um um, in Idols as well. Um, so, before he became famous, Jimi Hendrix made a modest living as a sideman when it came out to the army in the early 60s. That's true. Um, he um, tried, he tried, he went in a, He went into the army for a bit, and he was also playing alongside uh, the likes of Wilson Pickett, the Eiley brothers, Sam Cooke, uh, Cooke, Cooke, um, I hope I'm saying his name right, right? I hope I'm... 
I've kind of butchered it, and eventually Little Richard, who was his idol. Um, Hendrix's show, showmanship proved to be a problem for the Tutti Frutti vocalist, who felt the flamboyant guitarist in his backing band, The Upsetters, was stealing some of the limelight. The exact reason for Hendrix's departure depends on who you talk to. Richard's brother, Robert P Pennyman, claimed that Jimmy was always late for the bus and flirting with all the girls and stuff, stuff like that. Others suggested the breaking point came... Vendrix turned up in for work in a loud shirt. So apparently, apparently, Lee, Lee, he was stealing the spotlight from him for wearing a loud shirt for some reason. I don't know. It's um, it's very confusing. But there actually isn't a lot of information of the upsetters on Wikipedia. At least I'm referring to Wikipedia, of course. Um. Because when I went on their Wikipedia page, I actually couldn't find a lot of things about them. But, yeah, that's apparently why Jimi Hendrix got um, fired and he went on to become the greatest guitar player the world has ever seen. So, yeah, that's what how it happened. Number two. Courtney Love of the band Faith No More. Now, Faith No More, um, once again, is a band that I have actually never heard of in my life, but uh, I found out about, but as you all know, who, who, but but apparently, according to Wikipedia and according to who, a video, which I'm going to show on you right now, but yeah, according to Wikipedia, and this video right here titled Top 7, seven Bands That Lost Their Lead Singer and Kept Going by ARTV, he, apparently Faith No More actually had a few different vocalists before they ended up sticking with their current one, um, Mike Patton. They actually had three vocalists. These three vocalists consisted of Mike Morris, Courtney Love, the person who will be the front woman who will be looking at today, and Chuck Mosley, who, according to this timeline, appeared on the first two albums. Now, why was Courtney Love thrown out of this band before she became famous with the band Hole? Now, why was she fired from Faith No More? Well, for the simple reason of acting like a dictator. And I'm gonna sh read out all the part, and I'm gonna sh read why um that's apparently the case right um but right now i just have to you know read it for a bit so bye so according to this um little brief summary by the bbc it says and i'm gonna read the whole thing <clears throat> to lose one lead singer may be regarded as a misfortune to lose a second Mm, looks like a carelessness. Influential Francisco rockers Faith No More didn't really pay off, didn't really hit pay dirt until they recruited Mike Patton as their third vocalist in 1989, a replace, replacement for the late great Chuck Mosley, who sang on the group's satirical funk metal classic we debut We Care A Lot. And before Mosley, future whole singer, future whole lead singer and grunge superstar Courtney Love um, was briefly at the helm. Love, as we've come to discover, is an artist who clearly knows who's what she wants. But as Faith No More or Front Woman, she was deemed too autocratic by the rest of the band. So ultimately, because of that, she got kicked out just after six m months of being with Faith No More. Although she still remained good pals with the keyboard player Rod Roddy Bottom. B-O-T-T-U-M. That's how you spell his last name. Faith No More's de facto leader, Bill Billy Gould, is quoted in the real story, Chef... Steph Stefan's Chirity Zardi's Chirity Zardi's he's 1994 bi bi biography biograph bi biograph biography of the band as saying it got to a point where things were just too much Courtney is not the sort of person so you would want to be just be an equal in bands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She got to the. She got to lead and tell people what what's what. She was the dictator. Our, uh, she was the dictator in our bands. Things were democratic. So that's why Courtney Love was thrown out of the band. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I've never heard of Courtney Love in my life, and um, and I've heard that she was apparently bad to um um Kurt Cobain, the front man of um Nirvana. And I'm afraid I'm gonna have to end it here. But yeah, other than that, I've not heard much about her.